The onset and the end of the truffle season can vary significantly from year to year, with shifts of up to three weeks in either direction. Countries which are newer to truffle hunting often have no regulations regarding when the season begins and finishes. But in countries like Italy, uh, which have a long truffle hunting tradition, there are strict laws to govern the duration of the hunting period. Collecting truffles before the official start of the season is strictly prohibited, and violating these rules results in hefty fines. Although hunters tend to abide by these rules, some argue that they are unreasonable, as the fixed starting date does not take into account this variation in season timing. And another point of contention is how much damage is actually caused by unearthing these immature truffles. Unlike, say, green tomatoes, which will in time ripen on the vine, these precocious truffles never become any more mature. If they stay in the ground, they will simply decay. So a lot of people think, well, why not collect them? Leaving the truffle in the earth helps their reproduction, ensuring that both male and female mating types remain in the soil. But these immature truffles contain very few low-quality spores, which begs the question, how much of a role do they really play in reproduction? So I asked around and I was given three reasons why early season hunting is and should be outlawed. Firstly, I consulted with Italian mycologist Sergio Mustica, who explained that this approach is partly based on research that was carried out on truffle farms. These studies revealed that excessive harvesting led to a decline in truffle yields in subsequent seasons. In addition to this, I asked my go-to science guy and truffle partner, Angelo Di Stefano, who emphasized that the law serves to regulate activity in natural truffle habitats. He pointed out how excessive digging and failure to fill in holes can disrupt the soil structure and has already contributed to the near extinction of the tuber melanosporum in the wild in Italy. Finally, there was a general consensus which seemed to be this. Given that our understanding of the truffle life cycle is currently incomplete, it's wise to exercise caution in order to avoid inadvertently causing damage to the truffle ecosystem. In other words, we don't really know what we're dealing with, and so it's best to err on the side of caution. From a culinary perspective, it's no great loss if we don't collect these truffles. Smelling them, even looking at them, tells you that there's something missing. They lack the complex, rich aroma that you would expect a truffle to have. Unfortunately, though, they still hold value on the market. They're the only species which are available right now. And so, despite their inferior quality, they demand relatively high prices. This means a lot of hunters may be tempted to start hunting early, and in a lot of countries, they are perfectly free to do so. It would make sense for truffle buyers to hold off and wait a few weeks for the better quality truffles. These immature specimens won't give you the full flavour experience. And you could also inadvertently be contributing to the truffle crisis. The optimal time to harvest and to enjoy tuber stevum is in the second cycle of the season. Now, typically a black truffle season is characterized by four cycles and each cycle follows a similar pattern. There's a gradual buildup leading to a peak in production, followed by a decline. And finally, there's often a period where there may be no truffles at all before the next cycle starts. The initial cycle is usually the least productive in the second cycle, the yield greatly improves, and the third cycle marks the peak of the season, producing the most abundant and the highest quality truffles. For us, the final cycle usually occurs in July, when the truffles slowly start to decline, both in number and in caliber. The season concludes with an anticlimax, when the truffles harvested are either very dry or else they're very pale in colour with little veining, rather like the immature truffles of the first cycle. The aroma has gone and with it the summer truffle season. The duration of the cycles and productivity are affected by the amount of rainfall that has been in the three months preceding the season, as well as temperatures and rainfall during the season. If the year is too hot and too dry, there will be a shortage of quality truffles and the season will end usually prematurely. Many hunters insist that these cycles follow the waxing and the waning of the moon, 
Now, as lovely as this sounds, there's no scientific basis to support any connection between lunar cycles and truffle production. I mean, we don't know, perhaps there is a link as yet undiscovered. Or maybe these beliefs simply reflect the deep-rooted human habit of associating natural occurrences with celestial events, such as the phases of the moon. Whatever the case, this illustrates how our knowledge of truffles is simply scratching the surface and that we have a whole lot more to learn about them. The tuber estivum season has just started and we spend these early weeks checking out our old sites and also exploring for new ones. As with most kinds of foraging, I suppose we have these reliable sites where you can always be sure that truffles will grow year in, year out. But not all your locations are so dependable, so you need to be constantly looking out for new ones. Forests are dynamic and as such they're in a constant state of change and to hunt successfully you have to match that energy and put yourself in an equally dynamic state. In other words, you need to be adaptable. You can't rely on the same old behaviours year in, year out when everything around you is in a constant state of flux. As trees age, it seems that their ability to produce truffles diminishes. So while old forests may still yield the occasional truffles from 100-year oaks, their truffle-producing days are largely behind them. I think that we've caught some of our sites right at the tail end of their producing years, and now it's time to retire them. Before we get too sentimental about ageing trees and retiring trees, let's get excited about the flip side of the situation. While older forests are declining, newer trees like these are maturing and creating new fertile truffle hunting grounds. Take for instance this patch of forest. When we first explored this area quite a few years back, these trees would have been too young to support truffle growth. However, with time, they've started yielding truffles. So, ta-da! A new truffle site. And, and this is the dynamic state of truffle hunting. Old patches will fade out and new ones will start to emerge. I'm returning to this forest for the new season and it's been nine months since my last visit here. The familiar landscape has subtly evolved. The brûlé used to be centred around just the one tree. This burn mark shows us that the mycelium under the ground is starting to spread and so hopefully there'll be more truffles under more trees in the coming seasons. There's another reason why we're exploring the forest. At the end of last year's season, we spread millions of truffle spores in promising spots. Now, if you hunt for truffles, you'll know what I mean by a promising spot. Yeah, it's that frustrating kind of place where all of the growth factors seem to be in place, but you never find any truffles. So we're going back to have a look and see if anything has grown there. This is very experimental, but it's going to be very interesting to see if we can actually affect any positive changes. Uh, though let's be clear, we're kind of doing this out of necessity and desperation and not scientifically so. so there's no way of knowing if our actions have caused any new production, if there is any. Also, we've no idea about the timeline, so we could be in this for the long game. One more thing which is constantly changing is the information we have about truffles. It seems to me that there's a growing number of studies coming out about truffles every year. There's the worrying research which scares hunters to the core, the climate change and the demise of all truffles. But there's also the science which furthers our understanding of how truffles grow and reproduce. New knowledge that we may be able to use in our favour out here in the field. Information that hopefully will help us to safeguard future truffles and the truffle forests. Meanwhile, as some of these studies have predicted, we are doing battle here in the south of Europe with extreme weather patterns. And droughts and heat waves mean altering our behaviour and how we look for truffles. For example, places where we used to work a decade ago are now too warm for truffles and have stopped production. To counter this, we're exploring at higher altitudes and travelling further north when that's possible. As you know, moisture is also an important growth factor for truffles. In the past, there were several locations which we didn't even bother to look at because they were too wet. But with all of these droughts we've been having the last summers, these once boggy places are now just the right kind of damp. Well, there are no truffles there at the moment, but we'll definitely keep them in mind for our future treks. There are other changes which are more obviously a result of human activity. There's the rake marks, there's all of the leaves all piled up over here. 
exposing all of this ground, exposing all of the spores. Many spots have not survived being massively overhunted. There are always hunters who don't bother to fill in their holes or to keep their dogs in check. Other people have little understanding of how truffles grow and come in with rakes that tear up the earth and destroy the mycelium that has taken years to form. Amateurs, yeah. Besides hunters, there are other people working in the forest, exploiting it for their own needs, and our interests often conflict. It's always distressing to find that a great truffle location has been hacked to pieces. That's not to say it won't grow back better and stronger, but it will take time. We'll come back in a few years and check. So this is why we're always out looking. It's not that we're simply greedy and want more and more truffles and more and more places. Basically, we're just behaving as human beings have always done. Over generations, we've learned to constantly adapt to our environment, making adjustments to account for the changes that will inevitably occur in the world around us. Sometimes it feels like a losing battle, but if you look carefully enough, you will see the hopeful signs too. Anyway, for now, that's all. If you're hunting, have a great season and take care. Bye for now. <laughs>